order. Uh, all right, hey, Mark. Um, Thursday, August 19th meeting of the Oak Hills Park Authority. Um, we will go through and uh, do attendance here. So we'll start, uh, Mike Palma, I'm here. Carl Dickens. He's muted, but he's here. Uh, Babar. Hey there. Our newest member, Alan. Welcome. Thank you. Pleasure to be here. Welcome. Thank you. Uh, Jennifer McAllister. Here. Denise Brown. She's here. Uh, Rayanne Bromark. Here. Can I get everybody? I'm, I'm here. Sorry, I was on mute. Yeah, no problem. And then we're just, uh, right now, we just are missing Joe. So we will... Uh, We'll get going. So first order, acceptance of the minutes of uh, 7-15, 2021. Uh, I have one or two comments. Okay. So on page two, the very top paragraph, starting with Mr. Gartner on the second line, it says um, the auditors will be arriving next month. It should be arriving this month. Mm -hmm. And in uh, toward the bottom on the golf operations report, the paragraph that starts with Mr. Alexander said um, on the second line there, it says addressed like draining, it should be drainage. Draining should be drainage. Cool. That's it, That's it for me. Anybody I, else? I just had one comment on mine. Um, under the <clears throat> call, to, call to order on the first page it says um whose term had expired had been replaced on the authority by alan dutton i have no idea what the next line means or what we actually did mr dickens said that discussion followed i think we should like get rid of that because i have no idea what we were talking about yeah that doesn't make sense <laughs> okay Anybody else? Um, yeah, um, I have what down, let's see, the tennis update on page four. Mm -hmm. It says, Mrs. Mrs. Brown said that the amount was over 1,000. I thought I had said over 2,100. So. Um, yeah, I remember here in the 2,100 too. I don't know if it was a different conversation, but I. I don't remember if it was at the meetings. Anybody else remember? I mean, I trust you, Denise. If you said, I mean, that's the number. So I don't I don't remember you. I wasn't there for that part, but I but knowing the supporters financials, yeah, that, that number sounds more more like it, Denise. 2100 sounds sounds uh accurate. Thank you. Yeah. So we would change that. That's all. Okay. Anybody else? Would anyone like to move the minutes? Your yeah, motion takes that. Anybody? Anybody like a second? Second. Oh, okay. Sorry, I didn't hear you, Jennifer. Um, all right. Uh, everyone in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any nays? Extensions? All right. The minutes passed. Uh, Joe Andrasco is here too, so we can reflect that in the minutes for this meeting. Uh, all right, open it up to public comment. Do we have anybody from the public? We do not. It's not look like it. All right, so we will close public comments. All right, next up, GM report. Don, how are you? Good everybody. How are we doing? Good. Good, Don. Good. So just to give you an update uh, regarding the restaurant, we are waiting on the final permits now. I spoke with the mayor on Tuesday. He was going to speak to somebody in permitting and help us kind of fast track stuff. <clears throat> uh, so I'm going to follow up tomorrow with um, permitting and see if that got moved anywhere. But if everything goes well, hopefully um, we can do a soft opening sometime next week. Uh, oh, what permits are you waiting for? Which which ones? Is it health? Is it fire? Or what it's it's everything. Else? It's all the uh, our occupational uh permitting stuff so it's the co um which falls in with uh fire it includes everything exactly i'm so going through it out. right now too yeah exactly so um i have a, i reached out to luca who's part of the fire 
Um, he's really good. I, I'll get, I, he'll call me back soon, but he's usually pretty quick on getting back and helping me out. Um, are they, can they do all the walkthroughs like in one day? Can they all, you know, fire marshal, health inspector, building inspector? It's that would tough. be a first. That would be a first. <laughs> I've never seen that. Come on, Don. That's why we pay you the big bucks. <laughs> yeah, you're working. You gotta remember, you're working with. Uh, you got government employees, so. All right. Well, they're doing their best. So they are. All right. So. Um, and Don, everything else is done except for the CO. Everything yep. in place. Uh, you. What do you mean done? Like the let's say the menu staff wise, you mean. Staff eyes were done. Uh, menu is um, getting sent to the printer tomorrow, which should be fairly quick. We can print it out if I need to, so I'm not worried about that. I can print it out tomorrow if I need to and use a, a paper menu. You don't need to do canned sodas. Do you have everything you need for fountain drinks? Yep. All the lines are, all the taps are done. All the, the kegs are in. All the tap lines are done. The, the TV's got finished today, so those are all working. The only thing left to do is the uh, is the audio stuff, but we don't, there's, there's nothing, we don't need that to open. Yep. That's, that's more of a luxury than it is a need. But so what about it, your point of sale system? Do you have a, do you have a point of sale system running? Are you using the same one that you use for the other two places? Or yeah, we're using restaurant manager, which is what we use at dry dock. Uh, that's already been installed. Uh, Scott Webb is running a line for me as we speak for the, the second POS system. Uh, we have the actual units. Actually, it's a third POS system. So we have, we'll have three POS systems up and running by tomorrow. We already have one behind the bar that's working. Um, and then the POS stuff is all done. The only thing, again, like I said, the only thing really done that's not done in the restaurant is the the audio stuff. But everything else is ready to go. Um, and Don, how long do you think you'll need to do a? How long do you think you'll keep the soft opening going until you think you'll be good to go for like the like the grand opening? I would say we held hold off to do the grand opening next month and kind of coincide it with uh, Rick's ban that we have scheduled for the middle of September. I think it I think it plays a little better, gives us some time to make sure we work out the bugs. And okay. then we'll do one big and it gives us time to invite the people we want to invite too as well. You know, put a list together we want to do for the big grand opening. Uh, but I don't see a problem um doing a soft opening probably next week um, i was gonna say if you do have the menu finalized maybe we can release that somehow like nancy on norwalk might cover it uh or sure. whoever somebody might post it on facebook from nancy on norwalk sure. and then, you know people start arguing about it uh the usual stuff but if you want to do something like that uh let me know okay just to sure. at least you know get some buzz going maybe sure Don, I don't, I don't know much about restaurants, but wh why would you need three different POS systems? Isn't that going to be too confusing to keep track of? Sorry, three different separate terminals. Yeah, it's no system. Ah. <laughs> uh, it's so that makes more sense. Okay. It's sorry. Yeah. No. Three okay. Different okay. Thank you. Yeah, they're just separate terminals. It just it allows <laughs> it, it makes ordering faster, so people we're not getting clogged up. To, at, to, yeah. Totally get it. Totally yeah. get it. Yep. Yeah. No, it's not three separate systems. Sorry. <laughs> So yeah. is the halfway house on, on the same POS as well? Or yes. That? Yes. Okay, cool. Everything's I streamline everything. And plus restaurant manager saves me on training because I have a lot of the same employees that are going to be um, interchangeable at dry dock from, or from dry dock that are going to go up here as well. And yep. they, and, and we do restaurant manager down there. So it's a simple, nobody has to learn a new system. There's no training that needs to be done other than new employees, but it's a pretty easy system. I understand the system well. So it makes it a really easy transition for that part. And it's a really easy system to use in general. So that helps. Um, and what are the hours? The hours, so I would think we should run it kind of similar to the way we do Silvermine, because I think it works well, especially with a golf course, is that we should be closed on Mondays and that'll be open, that'll be used just for tournaments and special events. Uh, and then Tuesday through Sunday, obviously we'll be open. Uh, from Tuesday to Thursday, I think we do, 11 to 10, I think makes more sense. And then on the weekends, we pump it up to, to midnight, see how that goes. And then on the weekends, we'll be open for breakfast. So we'll do breakfast um, sandwiches, probably starting at 8 a.m. Uh, we'll do breakfast and then we're gonna put a brunch menu together. We won't do that to start because I wanna get our feet under us because brunch is a kind of different animal. Um, but I, I would say starting in September, we put a brunch menu and start doing that on Sundays and do a really nice brunch 
that we can blow out and maybe have an acoustic guy out on the patio. Kind of, my vision is to kind of do something similar to what Crab Shell does, where on the weekends they have, especially on a Sunday, they have a nice acoustic guy out on the, on the, on the deck and it draws in people. And then we can do a really nice brunch from like uh, 10 to three. And we just, we'll do some really upscale, nice brunch stuff. Uh, we're also going to do, we're not going to start off. We're going to, like I said, this first week or two, we're not going to have a dinner menu. We're just going to keep the same lunch slash um, midday menu. Same thing too. But I want to put together a really nice dinner menu to help draw in that um, non-golf crowd, I should say, for dinner and make it a, a place where it's a destination for people to come eat. So it'll be a more of an elevated menu for night that way we're still catering to the golfers during the day and we don't get into that thing where the past restaurants did where they were kind of a high-end restaurant that only catered to high end. they didn't want really the golfers in there where the lunch will be our menu will be more like dry docks where it's casual um and then we'll have a dinner menu that's a little more elevated to draw in that crowd that will come as a destination but is it going to be like you said the barbecue theme is that what you're going to from the start, are you going to have that built in there, like the smoked meats or whatever? You're yeah, we're going to do. We're going to have. Uh, so, again, a southern barbecue kind of theme. So we're going to have shrimp and grits, for example, on the menu, which not a lot of people do. Um, we're going to do um, a southern fried chicken sandwich. We're going to do uh, smoked pulled pork and a brisket sandwich. And then we're going to we're going to when when the price of ribs and stuff comes down, um, we'll do ribs. We'll do some smoked salmon. We'll do, we'll do, we'll add some stuff here and there, but uh, I don't want to get locked into a theme of barbecue. It's going to be part of our menu, but I don't want it to be our main theme. Um, but it will be an attribute that we have that, that will also draw that crowd too. So I want to keep it as multifunctional as we can. So I think, again, our burgers are going to be a lot of, have a lot of smoke to them because the way we cook them. Uh, so there are a lot of elements in there that'll have barbecue in there, but it, I don't want to be pigeonholed as a barbecue place, even though we can market it sort of as a barbecue place for lunch and stuff. <clears throat> and then for dinner, like I said, I want to do more of an elevated, you know, uh, you know, your bigger dishes, your pastas, uh, your, your fishes, elevated fish or steaks and that kind of stuff. But I want to keep lunch kind of more on the casual side. That's more catered to like the golf audience. I would, and I guess I'll ask you too, Paul. I would caution against having uh, acoustic music on the you know, during golf, even if it's acoustic and it's not loud. I don't know. I mean, would that be a distraction? It's still, you know, you're still close enough to some of the tee boxes. I don't know. What do you think, Paul? Well, you know, I, I was there last year and it was highly successful and it really made a lot of people happy. And uh, they started late enough in the day that most of our golfers who play that at that time of day in the evening really wouldn't complain at all. They actually love the music. And then the golfers came in afterwards. And what it also did was it drew in some of some real uh, long time Norwalk locals who, who were there years and years and years ago and just haven't come back to the club in a long time. I mean, I, ag I agree with Paul, you guys were well, last year. I mean, after my round of golf, literally every like Friday, Saturday, Sunday, I would be down there listening to the music and I had no issues with it. And mm -hmm. sometimes you could hear it like on hole seven, eight, you know, but I mean, there was no problem with it at all. The only time it became a slight issue was when the leaves start to fall and they kind of, the sound traveled a little more maybe later in the year. But other than that, we really didn't get any complaints and a lot of people were really happy. And again, I'm, you know, for me, I've been there 10 years, but I really met some uh, Oak Hills Park uh, people who've been there coming there for 30 years and they've been, then they came back and they were really looking forward to this year. So they're going to be back. Awesome. And again, if we have, we have issues, if there, if there are some sound issues, we can always move them inside, put them in there where the old bar area was, because we kind of set that up to be a multifunctional space in there as well. Yeah. So I think that space where the old bar was would be perfect for uh, a band anyway. Um, so we can we can always move it inside if it becomes an issue. Because we did have last weekend, I think, or the week before, we had um, we had a kid's christening there, and they hired a like a 
a person that does like games and stuff for kids and he had a bullhorn and he was out there and that was kind of, I had to go out there and tell him to stop because we were getting complaints. So I'm hoping that the music's not an issue. I'm hoping like some of the golfers will understand what we're trying to do and trying to build the park and build this as a destination. Cause at the, again, at the end of the day, I think that helps the park in general, especially from a revenue standpoint, it helps us to add, put money into the park and the golf. And if we sell it that way and present it that way, which, cause it's the truth. I think, I think we'll win more people over than we'll make upset. Now we're always going to get people complaining because that's just the nature of the beast. So we're always going to have people that aren't happy with some element or, or whatever, but what happens if you got a patio full of people that are just out there eating, they're being loud, you know, it's something we got to kind of balance and we'll try to do our best to make sure we mitigate any issues. And if it gets too loud and we get multiple complaints, we'll move it inside and we'll adjust I'll it. That bridge when we get to it. Yeah, well, you yeah. know, you know, how it goes in mind. I love live music and, uh, some bands tend to turn it up a little bit, especially as their show progresses through the night. So we could, we've told them to turn it down a little. Yep. Um, the, the, the patio is good. It really shoots the music uh, toward the entrance. Um, we really only had one neighbor complain and he only complained because I think that was one of the last weekends of the year and we actually had music four nights in a row. And you know, that's when he complained, but, and then the leaves were down. So it definitely sound carried a little further. Well, I got, I got to tell you, I got bands knocking on the door, like <laughs> to get in there. So, and we have some that have a big following, which again, only helps the park in the long run because it adds more revenue into the park, which we can address a lot of the stuff that's going to go towards the golf anyway, whether it goes towards the simulators or go towards, um, you know, new car paths or upgrades in the, in the long run, I think we position it the way it should be positioned. It's it's a it's a win win for everybody, and it it only makes the park better. It only makes the golfing better. It only makes um, Norwalk better. So I mean, I, I'm hoping that once we're ready to go and they're seeing what we're providing and, and the product that we're putting out there, I think we'll smooth over a lot of people that might be upset over some music. But you're gonna yeah. get no matter what. Doesn't matter what business or what you do. You're always gonna get people complaining at some about something. I, I think it's going to be a hit. I mean, we were talking about it before everybody jumped on. It's a beautiful restaurant. I'm excited about it. Um, but to keep things moving along, does anybody have, else have anything for Don? I had a question. Um, Don, were you able to change that patio furniture or are you still using that stuff that was sent? Nope, we got the new tables in. Uh, okay. The chairs, of course, will be in, I think, next week because everything comes in from China. So, of course, they don't come in together. But the new tables are definitely in. They're a lot nicer. I think, Rianne, you saw those, right? She's still on? Yeah, she's on. She's on mute. Okay. Um, but they're nice. They're black tables. They're outdoor patio. Like yeah, Don, I told you, I loved, like, the tables. I'm waiting to see, like, the new chairs now. Yeah, so. and those are really nice, too. The chairs coming in are like a vinyl. They're like a, almost like a beach chair. on Like the vinyl. If you ever, or one of those chairs you would take up to, like, uh, to go watch a band or something. They're really nice. They're going to hold up. Um, and they but, look your, but your new tables are much better quality than the silver ones you Correct. had. So, much better. Yes, and, and much I, better. And, and they're about the same price, so it's a wash. Um, it's going to cost me a little bit to send it back, but I'm going to pay for all that because I made the mistake. So. Um, but other than that, that's really the only... I think everything else we did... Other, I'm not too happy with the lighting how it turned out, but um i just don't like where it got placed and it wasn't what we discussed with the carpenter or with the the contractor but at the end of the day it doesn't kill the restaurant it just it's more it's more grading on me just because we put a lot of time into the planning but it doesn't affect the restaurant any and we can always, and i already talked to my electrician he's going to help me adjust it um when we need to but i'm not going to do that now I just are, to, I just you, to... are you talking about the ones behind the bar there by the tv ones over the bar yes yeah. see i like those and i said the last time I was there I like where they yeah were I mean I and like the lights I just don't like where they are they kind of split the TVs in half um you can see the TV still just I just as me being a sports fan that I know that I'm a sports fan that if I'm watching a game and that's it's gonna annoy me <laughs> especially after <laughs> especially after a couple of beers I know that would annoy me as a sports fan but hey, 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 Don, Don, real yeah. quick on the on the patio furniture I read in the last month's minutes that you sold the one that you already had so Right. What, the, uh, our old one, right? Or is it our old stuff, or was it the ones that you already purchased? No, no, this, this, and that, and that, no, that's all in the paperwork that I have for you too, Mark. Okay, I forgot about you. 
Okay, um, I just want to make we sure. Sold, we sold the old tables and chairs. We got $100 per table and we got uh, $25 per chair for the old stuff that was out there. And you have all the paperwork for that for when I, when you get yes. it, when you get, yeah. okay, perfect. Yeah, That's I, I just want to make sure. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Um, so we may, and then we have the, the other stuff we're put out for sale is the other equipment in the kitchen that we're not going to use in that, like that big steamer that's retails for almost twenty thousand dollars we're going to try to we got it online right now for 15 so we're hoping we're going to get something for that um so don do you think your kitchen's big enough i i think you could do about no nah, no nah, i think we should <laughs> renovate that next year though. <laughs> <laughs> i think next year we should renovate it make sure we expand it a little bit out into the parking lot you know <laughs> yeah no it's like a football field in there like every every chef i bring in there there's like yep i can work in here so <laughs> Um, and we added just so you know, we added a couple things too. just again, it's an elevate. It just kind of elevates what we can offer. We got an espresso machine, um, not one of the $10,000 machines. We got it for an under a thousand. It's a good machine. It's a nice machine. It does cappuccino espresso. We bought, the, we bought a coffee machine in the past. We used to rent them from, or not even rent them. We used to get them from like W Mason or, uh, another supplier. And you just have to buy the coffee from them but nobody has any of these machines now. So I think we had an espresso machine and a coffee machine for under $2,000 for the both of them. So that's really good in terms of um, pieces of equipment that we're going to own anyway. I wish you, I wish I had known that you had uh, gone that route because there's a ton of machines down here that Joe sent down here to storage because he really? wasn't, he wasn't using it at the time. You should come down sometime and take a look. Okay. Is it coffee and that kind of stuff? What else? is there any kitchen stuff down there? It's all coffee stuff. Oh, okay. Wow. Jim, how come you've never told us this before? <laughs> he's, got it, he's got it all set up. You know, yeah, yeah, right. My crew's using it. <laughs> you put the you put the stuff in the corner because you just need a place to store it, and uh, it never occurred to me. Sorry, sorry about that. No, does he own that though? Because that's the other problem. Because no, 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 no. That's well, we can always food. sell it. Why did he take it out of the kitchen? <laughs> uh, he <laughs> guess he didn't have a need for it. I don't he know. didn't have any space in there. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyways, okay. All right, well, let's do that. We can always sell that stuff too. I mean, coffee. Everybody's always looking for a coffee station, so yeah, that'll be an easy sell. Cool. Any anybody else have anything for Don? Why we have him? So, Don, the great thing is about the size of that kitchen is the great thing is when you come to have to do, say, like a wedding or a private function and do the a la carte at the same time, you, you've got two separate spaces where you can, uh, you know, put that out, which is always yeah, a problem. Absolutely. Right? I mean, there's... So you've got bags of space. So, yeah. you know, um, I'd be chomping at the bit from putting the tents on that green out there and doing those weddings. And again, it would be real fun, you know? Yeah, we are. That's, that's and again, that's where the big money is at those parties. You know, yeah, you're... you're, you're your restaurant operations are, you know, your kitchen, your food in the restaurant business really is a break even proposition. In most places you're making your money at the bar and you're making your money on these special parties, yeah. especially with food costs the way they are right now. Yep. Yeah. Um, those parties and the, and the, and the liquor is where the incremental profit is. And that's, and that's something we're really, we're excited about offering and, and, and doing, and especially when we fix that space a little bit just from the aesthetics uh, you know, there's, the aesthetics are um, in terms of the, the padding, just you know, painting and fixing some of the broken uh wood that's up there. Um, again, I think once we have this all done and ready to go, that people are gonna be blown away. You know, and I think I, the other the other opportunity is in golf outings because you know, when you come a golf outing, obviously there's different types. There's yeah. like the, the ones you know that are, that are to do with the schools and stuff like that. If you get a, a any ones where you can charge some money, you can get some really good money on these golf outings. You so can we've and we've already and we've and we've already uh, we've already banked a lot of them and we've also have a lot that are in the hopper. So yep. um, the authorities already making some good money um, just on parties and stuff that we've done and not even being open, just being able to do these parties um, and moving forward. They're going to be, I mean, we get, we probably get calls at least three or four times a week. My GM gets a call about booking parties all the way until even to, for next year too. So even in the fall, we're looking pretty good and I'll put a schedule together. So somebody can kind of see it. And I'll have that. I can email it to anybody who wants to see that, that we have what's well, on the books now. And then 
when I talk with my music people that are going to be doing booking that stuff, I'm going to tell them to start getting working on that. I think we're really going to start seeing a lot of good weekends in terms of just outings where people are coming in for bands and stuff. Cause again, that's it. The food's the one thing. I think the food will draw people, but when we can do special events up there like music and comedy or, you know, anything like that. I think it just, it's just going to add another element to stuff that you don't really have in a walk. You just don't have a good place to go. So I'm hoping that we're going to be that destination. And Don, you're all set with Mary Ann for a soft opening next week. Mary, who's Mary Ann? Your liquor distributor. Oh. <laughs> oh yeah, no, we uh we got her delivery yesterday. So okay. Was, <laughs> um, and I just she was actually just over here. I had to <laughs> give her a check for Silverwine. So <laughs> yeah, she's all set. Okay. Like, she takes care. She takes good care of me. <laughs> all right we got a bunch to get to anybody else we got to still get to uh paul jim and mark so we good with the with don sounds good thanks don you're welcome all right let's move along to uh golf operations report with paul alexander paul okay i can make this quick uh we're really moving right along here in the season. Uh, golf's going very well. Uh, the golf business is doing well. Uh, Oak Hills Park really doing well. And COVID kind of helps continue to have our business at Oak Hills and, and the golf business in general really flourish. Um, our junior program is in our new golfer business, all the new golfers we've had this year. It's just never been this busy. And uh, we're getting a lot of support and a lot of interest. Uh, even kind of when it weans off in the fall, we still have some people who are really interested in playing and learning the game, uh, which is great. And so that's exciting to us. Um, our new uh, teaching pro, Mike Rapsarda, has been really helpful and he's been a perfect fit. He loves teaching golf. I think everybody loves him. He's allowed me to do some other things there. And, you know, we're working really good as a team together. And I have known him for 25 years. So uh, things are going good there. Uh, in our golf events, uh, we're almost through with our men's club championships going very well. Uh, we had our ladies club championship today and that went really well and everybody seemed really happy and they, they really had a good time. Uh, in about a month, we're going to have our third annual junior club championship. That was really a big hit and it's just getting bigger and bigger every year. I expect this to be a real big one and a lot of people are coming out. Uh, we encourage the parents to come and caddy and spectators and and uh, it's, people are getting well known. We're getting known for that now. We're getting kids from, you know, Darien, uh, New Canaan, who aren't even in our golf programs coming to compete. Uh, that'll be send Sunday, September 19th. Uh, I'd like to try to do a men's member guest on the 18th of September. Um, however big or small it will be, but it would be a good thing to have at the club, a, a Ryder Cup with the Oak Hills Men's Golf Association be pretty simple to do. That would be September 24th, 25th, and 26th, uh, the same weekend as the Ryder Cup uh, this year. Uh, we might even try to do a Norwalk City Amateur. Uh, this would be an event, no handicap, no strokes. We would just invite uh, some women, men, and some seniors to come out and play and just find out who the best golfer is. Um, that might be October 2nd and 3rd. Um, I think that would be great. Jim has been at our club um, maybe almost 10 years, nine or 10 years now. I think it'd be great to have us showcase the golf course and, you know, um, see how great the conditioning is of our greens. Um, and to do that, though, you know, we do need to incorporate that restaurant. So hopefully everything will be going by then and, and we can kind of incorporate the restaurant with these events. Um, we have probably six or seven outings left. Uh, and we're also getting some commitments from 2022 already. Uh, we have a really good golf shop sale going on right now. So this is the time of year where we're trying to get rid of some of the merchandise. And, you know, basically I have some stuff in there. It's going to be selling for cost. Um, and then also uh, we did have an issue with those first tee bathrooms and it didn't look good, but we got a great plumber in there, a well-known guy. He seems very genuine and honest and uh he basically just ended the leak uh, so we do have to address that but at least we have uh the bathrooms working for the golfers at the first tee because there's a lot to ask for them to go up to the clubhouse 
especially when a lot of people get to the T a little bit late. Um, and other than that, I would say, uh, you know, the course looks really good. I mean, I've been here 10 years. The greens are some of the best I've seen in 10 years, and, and we're really getting a good reputation for that. And uh, Jim's putting some grass out there and some seed, so the place is really looking good, and I think people are happy. And, you know, the word is out that uh, Oak Hills is really a, a great place to play. Uh, and then this is the time of year where we lose a lot of our high school kids and uh, some of our college kids all going back to school, but we're prepared for that. And, you know, we're just gonna move other people like baseball, football and other positions. So all in all, I think things are, are going pretty smoothly and, you know, we're looking forward to uh, the next couple months. Well, that's about it. Does anybody have anything for Paul? Any questions? Cool, thanks Paul. Yep. All right, moving along, Jim Shell, of course, maintenance report okay um course is all right right now we've been uh renovating some areas in the rough with aeration soil seed and hay and we do we hope to do uh all the bare spots uh by the end of the season let's see what happens there hopefully we get a good take with the seed mix that we put out uh once these areas are fully grass, it'll certainly make a big difference in appearance and playability of the course because, you know, there won't be any dirt, rocky spots left for their balls to land in. And, you know, let's call it a lift and lift in place or a penalty shot or whatever. We don't want that on the course. Um, the spot behind 16 green may be a little tougher. So I think we'll do a partial renovation back there with seed, but uh, the main walk-on area, I think we're gonna have to sod that late in the season, um, just because if I try to put seed there, it'll get trampled on and never grow. Um, I did get a quote for the rental house to uh, have some hardy fiber cement board put on, and it came in at, $43,560, which obviously is more than I expected. And obviously anytime I'm ever going to do any project like that, I'm going to get multiple bids, but that's kind of a weather vane as to, you know, how much we're going to have to spend. You know, we can, we can go to the option of a vinyl siding there and maybe pull the fence closer to the house and a little taller, essentially, uh, eliminating the chance for balls to hit the house. But uh, it's something I'm still exploring, so stay tuned. But uh, we really need to do it, not just for aesthetics, but for efficiency and, you know, things of that nature other than, you know, how it looks. There are other issues that are developed because of it. Um, we have a real potential problem on our hands at the irrigation pond. I believe that the tropical storm, Elsa, and the ones that we had in 2018 and 19, the heavy, heavy downpours, I think that uh, those have helped to silt up our pond. So where the suction line sits in the pond, it's supposed to be, or it was when I got here, 12 feet deep. Right now, I am uh, probing around there and I really only think it's eight or nine feet. So the suction line, we have it hanging out there. We put it out there every year. We have it hanging out there. It was near the bottom. I also think that the, the, the abundance of algae in the pond is an indication that it's become a lot shallower because you know when you have a deeper pond, uh, you have at least some cold water in there at the bottom. And when algae develops that, that like that, like we've been getting this year, which we've never had in that pond, uh, it's an indication that something's going on. And our suction line screen has been clogging with algae. You know, that's, that's a pretty major problem when you can't uh, use the pond water that's an extra three hundred and fifty thousand, extra three hundred and fifty dollars a night that we can't suck water out of the pond. So I'm still working on that. 
Um, I did get to raise the, the suction line about four feet. It was a pretty hard thing to do, but we figured it out and, and we got it up closer to the surface. So it's not near the bottom anymore. Uh, ultimately, I think we ought to get some uh, subsurface aerators, which I'm in the middle of investigating the cost of right now. It's, it's they're like these things that they, there's four or five different ones in the pond and they emit diffused oxygen and it comes up to the surface. You can see the bubbles on the surface and uh, that will help with keeping the algae down. But ultimately, uh, the worst case scenario is we need to dredge the pond. You know, that's not an inexpensive option. Okay, so speaking of the pond, uh, I met with the insurance adjuster to help him understand the flooding issue from uh, Tropical Storm Elsa. Took about an hour. Our neighbor, Mr. Fratellone, was present. And the, the adjuster hasn't disclosed any findings as of yet, as far as I know. But he's now fully informed about what's going on there. And, uh, you know, has the most education now to make the better decision. And if anybody has any questions, let me know. Hey Jim, did that did that um, pond have any issue? The the fact that the, where it's three feet difference and have any issues causing the flooding, or is that totally separate? No, I, that's the pond was full when the uh, storm started. Yeah. So there's, it's not like just because it's shallower, it's going to add any water to the situation. So that's not, not a problem there. Okay. But I do think that maybe, maybe the adjustment in the cart path that we made a couple of years ago, maybe that's changing the flow and pushing the silt towards the pond instead of behind the green on five. I don't know. I don't know. I hate to speculate right now, even that it's shallower than it used to be, but I gotta, I gotta do more study on it. So it's shallower than it used to be. Yeah. We're still getting all this rain and it's not filling up. Like where's all that excess water going? And I'm sorry if it sounds like a silly question. But well, the pond is full. The pond is um, with water. Is it, is that what you mean? Yeah. <laughs> yes, it's full. It's full. We haven't emptied that at all this year. Okay. So the biggest issue is the silt and the algae? Because you're not yes. we can't pump it out of there. Is there I mean, I, I guess this might be a dumb question only because again, having a swimming pool, I deal with algae all the time, but um is there anything we can do to treat that pond water where we can still where it doesn't kill the grass to use it? I talked to a guy today. They're going to come and investigate and see what they can do. But yes, we can treat it. I can't myself because I don't have an aquatics license. Okay. But uh, the people that provide the the uh, diffusers, the underwater aerators, they also treat as well. And they're going to come and take a look and see what our best option would be. Jim, is some of the water also going like as we're on five, you know, to the right, to the water on the right? I mean, where? That's that's where the overflow is supposed to go into that small pond. Yeah. Okay. So that's what I was. I'm like, because that seems like kind of empty or not as high every time I play. So. Yeah, but but that's of no consequence to the golf course unless you hit your ball in there. We have. We have no stake in that pond, so to speak. Okay. All right. So, Jim, can you, because um, it sounds like there's a bunch of different potential options, if you can kind of put a list with just some bullets of like those options that you've mentioned, potentially those aerators, dredging, whatever that would sure. cost. What I... For the next meeting, if we could just say, hey, this is the best options and we'll, we'll talk it over. Yeah. Well, I'll get that together as soon as I get the information from the company. Cool. 
Tim, is there anything living in that pond? Like, are there fish in there? And... Oh, there's a ton of bass. There's, oh. see, there's, there's another issue. There's a ton of bass. Uh, there used to be a lot of grass carp, which eats vegetation, not necessarily algae, though. And over the last couple of years, the grass carp have been dying off, which also makes me think that, yeah, that cold water at the bottom, it's gone. They don't have a place to go to get down to the to the bottom anymore and maybe that's why they're struggling they've been dying off i've been finding them dead so i know that there's only one well there might be more than one but i know that there's one grass carp and that there's two koi i don't know how they got in there but there's one orange and one white koi in there but they're they don't really help much with the vegetation so so are there any fish that you can think of besides what's in there that would help eat away the vegetation and the algae or the, they no the, the the grass carp are the only ones that would really make a big difference and i've talked to this company who they they also stock ponds with grass carp mm -hmm. but uh when they come out they're going to make their recommendation to me based on what the pond looks like yeah, that's an indicator. Those fish live through everything. So if they're dying off, that's an indicator that something you're well, probably right. Don't forget, I think they've been in there for a long time and it could just be old age, but it kind of is an indication that maybe it has filled in and there there's no more place for them to go. Yeah. Down down deep. All go right. Ahead. All right, cool. Anybody else have anything for Jim? No? All right. Thanks, Jim. Stick around because we'll get to the cart path stuff a little later on. Yep. Uh, all right. Mark, financial report. Yeah, I just want to make sure we keep on time, too. Uh, I think we have to go into executive session by 730 or at least a few minutes afterwards or else it expires if we don't get in there on time. So I just want to make sure. It, okay. it won't expire. I could change it if we need to. Oh, excellent. Thank you. Thank you. Let's keep it moving like it will. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll be quick, even though everyone's uh, favorite subject is accounting, I'm sure. Uh, yeah. Just a couple quick general notes. Huh? <laughs> yeah, you, it's yeah, yours. Money. Money. <laughs> yes, here we go. Um, <clears throat> our year in close and financial audit went very smoothly. Uh, <clears throat> the field work is all completed. The audit has gone through uh, management review, and they've already sent on the draft report. So we're in excellent shape in our, in our timeline. And um, <clears throat> excuse me, I plan on turning around the draft report in the next couple of days, uh, probably by next Wednesday, the latest. And then it, we play tag back and forth. I send them a copy, they send me a copy and we make changes and so forth. So it's just the beginning of that process, but it should go pretty quickly. Um, and, I'm sorry? Were there any surprises? Did they find yes. that? That's actually my next point. Yeah, the last few audits have been, uh, this one was clean, it was fine. The one surprising element was um, uh, they did find that uh, our the new cart cart path sorry the new cart lease cart <laughs> the new golf cart lease that we have uh, is actually has to be a uh, a capital lease rather than an operating lease. We've always had it as an operating lease because of the term. Uh, this year, because we added on an extra year, uh, it it triggers one of the uh, factors that that created capital lease. So. What does that mean? It means that basically uh, when you have an operating lease, you expense your payments as it goes along as part of operating expense. And if you look at my P&L, you'll see that on your card expense for the last few years, for, for as far as we go back, I believe. Um, and that's what we budgeted as well. And that's why this is important that everyone understand this, because going forward for the next 12 months, um, we're going to be with a capital lease. That amount basically gets put on a balance sheet as most of the balance sheet as, an, as a fixed asset and as debt. And then when you make the payments, you draw down against your debt owed. In addition, you, you, uh, you uh, recognize the expense as depreciation, right? So it's below the line. So what it actually is doing is making our net operating income look better. But that can be deceiving. And I want to make sure everyone understands as we look, uh, you know, it's, good, it's basically $16,000 a month for six months out of the 12 12 months for the year. I just want to make sure everyone is aware that it's not like that amount is gone away. We still have to pay that amount and so forth. So it's a little bit of a classification issue, uh, but it does appear better on our financials. 
Is there any question on that in general? So your financials are going to look much better because you're not getting that 16 grand a month, but then it goes on the balance sheet, right? And does that affect the cash flow at all, Mark, or not? No effect on cash flow whatsoever. It just grosses up the balance sheet, and then the, you'll see the expense hitting over a uh, uh, flat line, straight line over five years as depreciation expense, as opposed to actually when we pay it hitting operating expense. So, so the, the at the end of the day, if we if we owe three hundred thousand, we're still paying three hundred thousand. No, no effect there. Got it. Okay. The only change is, correct me if I'm wrong, Mark, it's that the actual, it's not the payment, it's the actual paper entry, right? Where it's the depreciations at the bottom. So it has the potential to be lower than what the operating expense would be above the line. Cause you're straight. Yeah, instead of being over, yeah, right. instead of it being basically expensed as incurred over four and a half years, we're gonna straight line it over five years. All right, any other questions on that? All right, then real quick, uh, just preliminary numbers for July. Uh, we're looking at a cash balance of nearly $520,000 at the end of July. Balance as of this morning was 604,000. I believe we'll end this month somewhere around 620 and 630, depending on fixed assets and some repairs and maintenance and stuff. Um, as I hinted at in last month's meeting, uh, July looks to uh, have slightly underperformed against budget, uh, mostly due to rain, excessive heat, including that tropical storm that Paul referenced and, and Jim referenced, uh, that closed our doors for a full, full Friday and a, that's $13,000 just gone. Um, we still do very well though. I wanna I want make sure everyone's aware of that. July numbers are still great compared to some previous years, but not as well as, two, as 2020, which uh, this will be, it was nice last year. Last year, each month we kept seeing, you know, an overage versus the year before and versus budget because it was, we were blowing everything out of the water. Now, when you're going to compare that against last year, obviously, it's going to be hard to keep pace with that. And I don't think we will keep pace, but we're only a little bit below it, at least preliminarily now. So not, not too bad at all. Uh, and just real quick, the, some numbers. Revenue rounds of 5,800 versus budget of 6,150. And prior year was 6,500. So 700 rounds less than last July. Uh, and we've continued with our debt payments to the city, and we paid another $12,000 for the month of July. Did you see a drop in expenses? considering it rained and we were closed for a day? No. No, and part of that is, you know, last, last well, last May through August, September of last year, we were extremely tight with expenses. We were paying for almost nothing, as Carl, Joe, and, and Mike can tell you, because we were, um, we had no money, we had no money in, in the middle of May. And even though we started making some money, we were being extremely careful and, and only doing the absolute, uh, what was needed. Um, so we're really putting band-aids on anything we could. So now we've already, uh, you know, we've put more into the budget. So we, we expected to spend more. Uh, now, mind you, on a day like that Friday when we had the, the, the doors closed, um, you know, Paul sent his workers home. I, I, don't, I don't know about Jim, but, you know, if we weren't making any money, uh, we, we were cutting salaries for that day. But some, I, some of the costs, some of the costs are fixed, which which wouldn't be affected by that. I do Go have ahead, a, I do have a question. This is on a different subject, but it still has to do with finance and everything. With regards to our two dollars or two dollars and five cents now, whatever we're up to. However, I do know the BET and also Common Council are reviewing our like playable rounds or like revenue rounds as we want to call it. So where do we stand with them as to what we're qualifying as revenue rounds? And are we actually giving the city the appropriate money that we owe them? We are yeah, still working through the accounting on that issue and determining the response that we will give to the BET. Okay. Okay. Cool. Anybody else? I just uh, this is this point. I just want to reference. I don't know if anybody saw the article yesterday in the hour about the restaurant delays. And one of the quotes that we tried to get corrected because it was incorrect was that the city had provided us with thirty thousand dollars for code upgrades on the restaurant, which is not the case. 
but as the controller, Mark, can you confirm to the world that we did not receive $30,000? Yes, I, yes nice. I can confirm that. I can confirm that, uh, especially since May uh, 9th of 2020, when we, we reopened, uh, all money that we've received has been through either golf operations or the incremental rentals from, from tennis or, 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 or the, the one house that we landlord. So uh, we received nothing from the, from the city in that regard. Got it, perfect. All right, anybody else have anything for Mark? Thanks, Mark. You got it. Uh, all right, on the committee reports, Jerry Crowley, supporters of Oak Hills. All right, back. Back. Uh, I'll have a quick report. Uh, the, uh, there was some activity going on about birdhouses uh, uh, with the Nature Committee but I don't think there's been a resolution for that. Other than that, uh, I don't have a report. Okay. Mark, can you, can you fill anything there? Uh, no, unfortunately with, um, this is my busy time. So I, I haven't gone to the last two uh, nature committee meetings. So I'm a little out of the loop. Uh, I do, I did read something about birdhouses, but I, I'm, I apologize. I, I don't know the status of that right now. Okay. But if anybody, just real quick, if anybody hasn't been to the uh, to the Great Lawn, uh, what we've been talking about with the meadow there, uh, and thanks again to Jim and his team, and as well as obviously Audrey and all the uh, Nature Committee volunteers, uh, meadow is sprouted. <laughs> I didn't know it. I didn't know how a meadow grows. And if you take a walk over there, it's not how it was at the beginning of the season. It is wild America over there. And I I walk there sometimes on lunch break. And I see rabbits and a lot of different, it's just a lot of pollinating, right? a lot of butterflies and bees, which is what we're supposed to be doing. So uh, it's looking great. Yeah, it is beautiful. Yeah. Great, thank you. All right, thank you, Jerry. All right, tennis update, Denise. Okay, hi everybody. Um, well, the season is about over as far as our lease um, obligation with Kings Highway. So they will be added there the Friday before the end of the month. So I think that is, I'm not sure if that's the 29th, uh, but it's gonna be somewhere around there. Uh, so they will be totally out of the office. Their pros will be gone and the courts will be still open. Um, I've I have to make sure that they leave the bathrooms open. Uh, the office will be locked. And I don't know, Jim, do they have their own keys and they just walk away? Is that how they've been handling it? Typically, yeah. Typically. Okay. So you have a key to get in the office if we need to get in the office, right? Yeah. I have keys for everything up there except for that closet inside, which they caused an issue about, but whatever, that's okay. You mean the little closet by the desk in the back there? With the ice maker in it. It's uh, somebody shut it and it was locked. Oh. I don't know how they got it open. Okay. So, um, so the season is definitely coming to an end as far as uh, Kings Highway is concerned. I'm gonna have a meeting next week with Jeff Gokey to talk about how the season went, uh, you know, the pros and cons of some of the things that happened and didn't happen. And uh, actually Lisa Britton is gonna be in part of the meeting with me because you know she's been with me and on the team. And so I kind of feel like we, you know, we both saw things that we would like to discuss with Jeff. You know, there's things like they wouldn't allow water on the courts for the players. Everybody had to supply their own water. So we always had those big uh, tanks filled up. And it's not uh, the management. Barbara didn't want the water on the courts. And all the other clubs had water on the courts with their big tanks. So just little things that I feel that, you know, we was, need to kind of go over with with him. So was it was it an issue of COVID water? Well, COVID, I think I mean, it's. It started with COVID at the beginning of the season, but you know, I mean, everybody kind of loosened their yeah, restrictions. Yeah. I mean, nobody was wearing masks, nobody required masks. We didn't either. You know, we're not a private club. So the only time the private clubs required the mask is if you went into any of the shops, you know, the restaurants or anything like that. But then I think they kind of just stopped that as time went on. So, you know, the fact that they didn't want any water on the courts to me was just kind of, um, I, you know, I, it was just a no. There was no explanation to follow. So everybody had to supply their own water. Uh, I think it's so interesting, Denise, because um, 
I used to manage the Token Eat Club for a year, just, you know, after I retired. And they have water, but I also play at Bailey Beach at, at, in uh, Rowayton, and they didn't have water. Their board didn't want to have water because they said it was a COVID issue. I don't think it's a COVID issue, so I agree. I think there should have been. I think it's just an issue if they wanted it to be an issue. Yeah. It okay. was a choice. I think it was just a choice, not an yeah. issue of COVID. Mm -hmm. So, but um, I plan to meet with Jeff next week, um, which will be good because I like dealing with Jeff. Uh, he's very agreeable. Most of the time he's there when we need to talk to him. Uh, I did find it kind of funny when we had a couple of minor emergencies and Jeff came down, Jeff didn't have a key <laughs> to get himself into the office and stuff. So we kept saying, get a key, Jeff, you know, but he was relying on other people. So um, that was kind of an interesting little uh, thing that he needs to kind of, you know, button up with. But uh, one of the things that I just wanted to, I, I think I talked about it a little bit last time, is, you know, trying to add other programs on now that Kings Highway will be out of there. But um, the, there's a lot of issues with trying to do that. One is that you need a pro, because all the pros will leave now and go to all the other um, tennis facilities because they all have full-time employment or almost full-time employment. So if I added a program on it, so it's just like a six week program and it would only be something possibly on a weekend if, um, you know, if the board would approve it and we would have it a youth program with the kids either on a Saturday or Sunday. Um, but my main option right now is if we can, if I can kick this off for the six week starting in mid September to early October, well, before the time changes in October. Um, it, you know, it would be a very low cost program just to introduce, to get people of the young kids knowing that there is a program there in the fall. They don't have to spend all that money at Kings Highway or Solaris or all the other places that have very high priced programs for kids. Um, I don't know if, if we can, you know, maybe talk about this in a separate meeting, but if I was gonna do this, uh, I would have to pretty much do it within the next two weeks to try to pull it together. I do have a pro who's interested because he has a light schedule, but it's all up in the air. And if I did do it, I was thinking of possibly running it through the supporters for this year and taking whatever money that we made minus paying the pro as a donation for the supporters. Cause I don't think it's gonna be a lot of money. It might be, you know, it could be a thousand dollars. It could be $1,500, I'm not quite sure. Uh, but I did want to kind of promote some more activity on the courts because, you know, anybody that comes and plays now can just walk on the courts and play because there's nobody to restrict them, whether they had a pass or not. And even if they had a pass, that doesn't affect Oak Hills because all that money went to Kings Highway. So, you know, um, really, it's just kind of an open season now for people to come play. Uh, the supporters do play on the Saturday and the Sunday from 10 to 12. So, the money that they now generate will go to the supporters that used to go to Kings Highway as a minimal payment for the courts. But now that money will just be extra donations. And it's small, you know, we're talking about 40, 50, 60 dollars, something like that. Uh, one nice thing is that we're going to have a Labor Day tournament, uh, which will be on the Monday and it's going to be a, uh, we're going to try to supply a little bit of uh, light breakfast food in the morning. When I say breakfast food, I'm talking about bagels, cream cheese, you know, juice, water, stuff like that. And then there's going to be a kickoff tournament between 10 and 12. And uh, it'll be $20 per person that wants to play. We'll probably give a little, some kind of award to whoever wins, whatever team wins. And they did this last year. It was pretty good. So we're going to do it again this year, uh, which is, it should be a fun event. I don't know. The, um, Registration is now open and it's just going to be through um, Rich Dallinger is going to take the, uh, the registration and put it together and I'll be helping him. And um, Art Goldblatt has now been moved out of Yale, just for anybody who uh, knows Art and he's up at um, a place in Wallingford. So he's doing a little bit better very slowly, which is nice to hear. So I don't know if anybody, anybody have any questions? I, I was just gonna say for the, the potential uh, fall program, I think it's a great idea. I think what, what I think we need to do for next steps is probably mark, this is something that's 
doable. I just wouldn't want to know. I think it makes sense to have it go through. If we do it, have it go through the supporters and whatever kind of funds they raise, it's, it's going towards them. I don't know. We'd have to look at the charter and all those different types of things. So I probably want to meet with Joe and you, Mark, and probably Jerry and Denise. So we, we would definitely include Jerry and probably Ernie and Elsa, who are, who are the supporters. I'm not, I'm not on there. I just, uh, I'm I just, just like your expertise on, you know, like, sure, just, sure, sure. Just Happy to help. Yeah, sure. So, so Denise, I'm a tennis player and I actually joined uh, O'Kills for the first time. Uh, you paid my $95. I haven't played yet, but I'd be happy to help you if you'd like to, uh, you know, get together or sometimes because I'm just around the corner. <laughs> I live in Hunt, on Hunter's Lane. So, um, and uh, be happy to, you know, help out a little bit if you'd like. And you haven't played? <laughs> I haven't played that. I've been playing down in, in Bailey Beach. In oh, okay. Okay. Uh, yeah, like thank you. I would... Um, I would love to have some help. I mean, anybody is welcome to help. Um, I'll send you an email. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, I'll get your email off of the chain, and then we can kind of converse a little okay. bit more. Cool. Okay. Denise, I, don't, I don't know if you can answer this question, but I know this pickleball thing's a big <laughs> thing going around. I've never played it personally. I couldn't even tell you what it is. Mm -hmm. um, is that something you think would be an attractive thing to add? Um, oh, it would have to be on a hard court. We yeah. have hard true. So we would have to. Did you see the release this week that the city's opening up uh, pickleball courts? Yeah. Where is that? Tons of public courts that they have. Okay. I just thought maybe it'd be another thing we could maybe add or um, do in the fall. I don't know if it's a transfer. I don't know if you can transfer or transform a, a tennis court. I remember somebody asking earlier in the year, maybe last year about it. And I remember yeah. Denise saying that you needed a hard court. I mean, yeah. it does well, it's been, it's been it kicked around for about two years. Yeah. Yeah. So. I mean, it could be done, but we need a hard surface. We can't yeah. do it in the hard true. Yep. So we'd either have to figure out how to put a hard surface, temporary hard surface down, but I don't know if that would be um, suitable, you know? Yeah. And we even looked at the location over by the wall. Uh, you know, where you can hit balls off the wall and that sort of thing. <clears throat> but it always seemed to be that it was, uh, you know, a money issue and some other things. But Well, I mean, we have a huge open space on the side of the deuce courts, which it would be nice if we could figure out something to do with that to generate more money. Um, I always wanted to do paddle courts, but the thing with paddle courts is uh, usually people like to play at night. So we would, you know, they which would in be light, you know, we'd need lighting. So then I know that that's probably not something we can do because it would have to be approved with the town. And I think it would probably- it Has to be approved by zoning. And I don't think that certain people in the neighborhood would approve it. <laughs> right, I don't think that the neighborhood would either. Um, one question I had is the parking lot. Even though we are not part of the city of Norwalk, would the city of Norwalk consider repaving that and fixing that driveway for us, that whole parking area, or is that totally something that they would never consider doing? Not sure. I know that uh, they're responsible for the golf course driveway up to the golfer's parking lot, but I have no idea what, what the, uh, res whose responsibility is up at Dennis. Don, Jim, isn't is isn't the street that goes from Philo to the parking lot uh, a city street? Um, it's actually, I think they call I think they call it an avenue or something. But it, it, Charles, you're right, Charles, Charles Marshall, Marshall Drive. Yeah, you're right. It is their responsibility. I, Denise, I don't know about that parking. Is that limb still or that root still causing a problem there that you brought up about a year ago? Well, the roots that are growing, that are causing a problem, are growing towards the tennis court, not in, well, well, there is kind of a, some roots. Aren't there some roots, Jim, growing into the parking lot, too? Always. Yeah. Always. Because I know you were concerned people tripping over or something. Well, Jim mulched it up, and it held up pretty well. I mean, now the Good. mulch is pretty well scattered, so it's, you know, gotten kind of flat. But it we'll did help. It and you know what year. we did is we just moved the table out from under the tree and went to a whole nother spot. So people pretty much avoiding that area now. And so I don't feel like it's a focus anymore, which is good. Uh, one, uh, uh, one of the other things is we're waiting for the Grumman engineering people to come back with us with their survey. Um, 
you know, they came, they did their measurements. I've reached out to them like three times and I don't know if people are on vacation, but they just do not re respond or they haven't responded yet to my um, emails. Um, he did suggest one of the things he was talking about for the water problem, which could be a big deal, um, is that the two drains that are in the parking lot, he was talking about possibly routing the water from a dry well into the drains, connecting it to the drain so they would, the water could drain out. So I don't know how big of a deal that would be, but um, it was an interesting thing to consider. Sure. Well, we can always ask the city about the paving. I mean, the only thing they can say is one, no, or two, yeah, but it'll cost you this. Who do I speak to, public works or who? Uh, well, Anthony Carr would be somebody to talk to. Yeah, that's the public works guy or your council person for that. Uh, you're in, uh, what are you at, UNE? I think. Okay. Sure. Um, or you, or you could, uh, or any of the council people, I mean, you know, if you want, I can mention it to, to Keegan or we can talk to somebody else there. Well, it's up, it's up to you. I mean, I don't care. Well, yeah, I would love to talk to somebody or have somebody find out if we're, if that is something that the city would do. Yeah. I mean, the parking lot is pretty beat up. Yeah, it's, I doubt anything's ever been done to it, has it, Jim? Not no. in my time. <laughs> I don't think in the whole time. Yeah, I don't, I, I would <laughs> doubt it very seriously. So, I mean, if we had to dig up and put a tunnel into the, you know, what do you call it? to drains, it would be nice to know that the city maybe could come in and fix the parking lot. Well, give Public Works a call and see. Okay. I will. I know, back, um, back on uh, Pickleball, mm -hmm. uh -huh. they're putting it down uh, near Joe and Drasco's neighborhood. Yes. They're taking two uh, tennis courts and converting them not just putting lines on tennis courts, but they're now gonna be pickle, okay? And you're gonna get a lot of play down there where they were getting no play because it's getting very popular. Oh yeah, yeah, there'll be a lot have of to play. do is go over to Cherry Lawn in Darien. They put yeah. in uh, four, three courts over there. Yeah, and they took the single court away and they made three pickle courts. Yeah, and yep. uh, so that's really working well. And mm -hmm. if you think about it, uh, Joe's in South Norwalk, uh, they've converted a tennis court to or added pickle up at the senior center, which is, uh, you know, in Cranberry. Well, the senior I, center's had pickleball courts for a while. No, they just they just lined them off within the last 12 months. No, they're, they're out behind the back. Uh, every Friday, there's a whole bunch of people playing that. Right, but they were tennis courts that weren't uh, pickle. They weren't oh, lined up. Okay. Because I know they played a lot of pickleball there. So it would only be natural to put the next one in West Norwalk. Yeah, I think we could get the city covered. So I, I would say if you're going to talk to Public Works, uh, talk to them about the pickle court in public because you have a lot of interest in the, in the sport. It's coming. It's not really up and coming. You mean uh, talk to the city to see if they would put the courts in yeah. on their property, on the property there? It's their yeah. property. It's the city property. Well, okay. Now the okay. city owns a, the city owns the senior center and all that land around. It, so. Yeah. So we're, you know, we're acting as operators, just the same as the tennis course is run by operators. Where the authority is an operator of the city land golf course. Yeah. Okay, it works the same way. So uh, just to circle back on that, on the, um, and I think we could look into that, Denise, we could look into what the viability is of that. And then Don, if you could also be part of the conversations about the driveway, I mean, the parking lot with the city to see if that's viable, you know, I think as a GM, you should be involved in that too. So, um, sure, but okay. Hey, Don, what did it, what, what was the approximate cost of what you just did at the dock? Uh, total cost was about twenty one thousand seven hundred. Okay, I know it's not cheap. Yeah, that's striping though. That was the, the striping was like another five hundred. So it was like about twenty one two, I think, to do the whole parking lot of dry dock. Okay. 
Who did it? That was this guy gave me a really good deal. He gave me it was like two ninety a square foot, which most most of the time it's between five and ten dollars a square foot to do a parking lot. Now this is, this guy's out of Vermont or New Hampshire. Yes, New Hampshire. Yeah. All right, so. Yeah, take a look at that. And we can circle back. And then, Denise, we could start a uh, conversation. And anybody that wants to be, obviously, Alan, you can be involved in it, wants to be involved in taking a look at the potential of a youth program in the fall. And uh, cool. I mean, is anybody opposed if I was to try to put this together for the month of uh, October and September, a little bit of September and October, a five or six think, program? I think it's a great idea. Uh, did, Denise, did you say it's going to cost nothing? Well, whatever money we generate from the, the kids coming in to register, we'll go out and take care of the pros and, you know, um, and the rest of the money would just be um, taken in as a donation. Yeah, no, no, as long as it's not, it's worth trying. If it's not costing us anything, that's just a bonus on top. No, I think it's definitely costing, worth trying. It's costing my time. That's all it's costing. <laughs> if I can get paid for my time, then sure. But I have no. a question for you and Alan. Yeah. If we were to put someone in there, hire someone to work 40 hours a week and we generate income for the next 10 weeks we have some great weather coming up you know i i, I thought about that um be, you know you'd have to pay somebody minimum wage yeah and they would have to be there kind of from eight to eight or eight to six we'd need two people we couldn't just have one person it'd have to be two people with shifts um, and we, you kind of need something for them to do though, because there's going to be a lot of downtime. You don't know when somebody's going to walk onto the courts. Uh, half of the people that are going to walk onto the courts bought the season pass, even though the money went to Kings Highway. I mean, I don't know. We do we charge them because the past time is over, or do we just let them continue to come on the courts? The season pass. Don't they still have to pay for court time? No. No, that, that always that enabled them just to walk on the court and play. Oh. We can give them a one-year grace period. Yeah, I mean, I think, to be honest, in my opinion, somebody disagrees. I think mean, we could look into that next year, but I think at this right. point, because I do think yeah. there's potential for it, but we need to be organized about it. I can see yes. that. Yeah, we. I would need to kind of get all this information kind of presented to you guys, the pros and the cons and what it would cost and what we would have to do to kind of, you know, put that together. So, but it's something that definitely, I think we could look forward to. Yeah, and when we get ready to do pricing and present it in the uh, December meeting for next season, if we get stuff together, but then we could roll this right into the passes and the money for the golf course as well. I think so too, yeah. Particularly on the family passes. Right. On the what? Family passes. Family passes. Does anybody have anything else for Denise? We still got to get into executive sessions. So I want to. I have one question. It's not really for Denise, but it may be for some of all of you in your opinion. Uh, we, we pretty much had 14, 15 weeks of the golf season list left. Uh, we sold our last annual or membership maybe a week ago, and we really haven't sold many. What if we sold um, golf membership half price for the remaining? 14 weeks. No. You don't think we'd set, we'd generate some revenue? Well, the only problem I have with this, how long is the pass going to run for? To the end of the year. So and I could hold off and buy something toward the end of the year and get a discount rather than buying something up before. I just, I just think it sends mixed messages. And I think beyond that, I don't think we're allowed to do anything without like a public hearing, even if it is a reduction. I don't. That's think correct. That change anything with the fees that is correct that is correct so not a bad idea i just well are we selling the same product technically it's like a half season pass right that we're selling it could be a completely new thing we're selling no still got to get the rates approved and stuff though. still have to go and have a public hearing on it. we but got around it like we got around it during the covid year because of code yeah it was an emergency because we had to open so I had to do something to make money. Yeah. I think it's a good idea for next year. That definitely to think about yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. We'll throw everything against the wall. We'll figure, you know. So well, I, I think, think yeah, you're right. I think the more we package together for stuff for pricing for next year makes the medicine go down easier, you know? Yeah, given options, you know. So all right, cool. So we're ready to go into executive session. Okay. Okay. I don't think we need to vote on that, but 
All right, so it's 7.45, we'll go into executive session. So we get the other link that came in. Everybody has that second link, right? When did that link come in? It came in at 10.13 yesterday morning. That, the one that I sent. The one that you sent, yeah. It's titled, uh, it's, it's a response to the OHPA meeting agenda in minutes. Came from you, Mark? It's came directly from Mark, right? Yeah, it came yeah, from Mark. It was, a, it was in response to the, when I sent out the agenda and the uh, the minutes, it's to, to that email. Mm. Yeah, it's I got it. 10, 13 I yesterday it. from, from... Uh, I'm gonna go into it now then, guys. All right. And then uh, to, to the... Uh, 805, we're uh, out now coming out of the executive session, back into the general meeting. Uh, so we are gonna vote on the cart path vendor for the uh, continuous cart paths that were in the capital budget. So uh, Jim, I'll just present the... Uh... Okay, uh, the contractor would be during construction and the completion of the contract as proposed is $128,685. Yep, and just for the public notif uh, notification, this was the low bid. Um, yes. all, the city, all the city processes were followed. I mean, it's pretty straightforward. I just wanna, for any questions out there. Um, so does anybody wanna make a motion to approve? I'll make a motion to approve uh, Total of a hundred and fifty thousand, including. No, I don't think we have to. Well, this no, is just for the, This yeah, is not sorry. to approve any specific expense. So, I'll make a motion to approve the selection of Deering as a result from the RFP for continuous cart paths. Very good. I second the motion. All right. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any noes? Abstentions? All right. Pass. I make a motion that we adjourn. Well, we have one more piece of, on the agenda. We don't have to vote on it or anything, but it's just the um, authority meetings, the meeting time. I had a couple of people reach out to me saying that they were looking for different times, maybe push it back to the original time, which I believe was seven o'clock, right, Carl? That's what the originals were when we met in person, yes. Yeah. Right, back in the in-person meetings. And we still don't have direction from the city of whether we're going to be going back in person. I doubt that's going to happen. I, I get the same sense. And so I just as a, this is just a, a talking point. I think we could start, you know, brainstorming via email, but we'll have to uh, vote on it if we're going to change it again. As I, Mike, as you and I discussed, I explained, I am starting a new job as Mike knows, because Mike and I discussed, but I'm starting a new job. Okay. And I'm actually either commuting to New York City or like Terrytown two days during the week. And one of those days is Thursday. To me, the 6.30 that we've decided on with COVID is not good for me. And I actually brought it up to Mike that I wanna bring it back to the original seven o'clock that we had like prior to COVID, so. Yeah. I was the one that put it on the agenda, you guys, so. <laughs> yeah, and it was changed because, you know, the remote aspect of everything that we were doing. Now, we're still going to be remote, but I, that being, that was also back when nobody was going to the office. So, something to think about. I don't know if anybody has any strong feelings against the 7 o'clock. I personally don't have any problem going back to 7 since that's the way it was for decades, and we switched it during COVID, so I don't see there being a problem in my mind um, moving it back, but it would require a vote to move it back, I believe. Yes, so I, as I said, I was the one that brought it up with my new job, like new position I'm taking on, but I have to make sure it's okay with all of you guys since my in office days are Tuesdays and Thursdays. So obviously I'm not gonna be back from either Westchester County or like New York City to like 6.30. So I'm asking to go back to the original seven o'clock is what I'm asking for. My feeling is as long as we remain on Zoom, this way we stay at 6.30. Is anybody, I mean, 
I'm okay with seven myself. So, but I will do whatever the majority would wants to do. Yeah, I mean, ultimately the goal is to make sure everybody can can make the meetings, so we can always have a quorum and, and things like that. My feeling is, if it was always seven o'clock, we made a change because it was COVID related and everybody's working, you know, remotely. I don't have a problem moving it back to seven o'clock. Does anybody else have any? I know Carl stayed at six thirty. Denise and Rayanne said seven. Does anybody else have any thoughts on it? I'd rather seven. I mean, I could do either, but seven would be better. I really don't mind because I'm retired. <laughs> Make it easy. I think if a if a few people have a preference for a seven, I'm okay with going with seven. Okay. Do, do we want to just vote on it now then while we have everybody? Does anybody want to make a motion to vote on the uh, changing it back to the original time of seven o'clock? The, the only thing, if I could interrupt point of order, the only thing I could uh, ask is that if we do that, I mean, it's 810 now. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm guilty when I was running the meetings as well. They run long, long. Can we put time limits on each section of the agenda? And when we've reached that time limit, Mr. Chairman, you cut them off. I'm completely okay with that for sure. I no, I agree with that. But as I said, I like really need seven o'clock and I'm okay yeah. with time limits on like, yeah. you know, people's speaking points, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. I think we should, and I'll do a better job at uh, keeping us on track for that. Yeah, we're lousy at time management. What's that? I say we are lousy at time management. It is, yeah, we are now, uh, yeah, yeah. we should Bye. be 60 minute meeting, especially today was only one, you know, vote. So, um, all right, does anybody want to make a motion then? We could So I'll make this. a motion for seven o'clock to move the meeting. Thank you. I'll second it. Since I was the one that put it on the agenda, I'll second uh, it. <laughs> all right, all those in favor of changing the time back to seven o'clock, signify by saying aye. 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 Noes? No. No. Any abstentions? All right. Motion passes. So um, we will move back to seven o'clock starting uh, next week. I'll let Mark know. Thank you. Thank you, guys. I appreciate you. Can I make a motion that we adjourn? Adjusting to my new work schedule. I second. All right. Everybody. Have a good night, everyone. Good night, everybody. Bye, guys. Thank you. Bye.